thank you for worshiping Jesus. Thank you. Someday you'll really understand why. Someday. Someday you'll really understand why. And you'll wish you had worshipped him more. But I, I, I just appreciate the way you worship him. And <clears throat> that, as I said on Sunday, that little brook that's flowing, the precious Holy Spirit will cause it to increase and increase and increase until, you know, he said, out of our innermost being would flow rivers and let that little brook just increase to a mighty river, a mighty river, mighty river. You know, the sound in heaven, the, the, the word tells us is that like the sound of many waters, many waters, many waterfalls. I've been to Niagara Falls many times. Many Niagara's, the sound of worship and the sound of praise in his glorious presence. There's, there's a little something on my heart before I can get started right tonight. I heard pastor say the young people would be in the meeting tonight. Will all the young people in, where are you? Will all the young people in the meeting tonight stand up? Where are you? I want to know where you are, who you are. Oh, there's the, that's the choir <laughs> over here. Honey, will you do something for me? Will you? I want you right down here. Will you come? Come on, will you young people, not only them, come on, I want you right down here. Oh, bless you. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you. So, thank you. Oh, do, oh, I just love you. I love you. Now, right down front, come on, I want you right down here close by me. Yeah, I love young people. Come on, don't be afraid. Thanks for sitting on the front seat, every one of you. Hi. Thanks, kids. Oh, now isn't that lovely how they all came? Thank you, honey. That's right. Good girl. Right up on the front seat. Yeah. I love I love the young people. I want to, I I'm here such a short time, but in this short time, I'd like to meet as many of you as I can. No, would I'd like to know you? And if in any way I can help you, I would be glad to do so. Do you know Jesus knows every one of you by name? You know how many of you ever? realized or thought about it that Jesus one time was your age. You know, sometimes I think that we talk a lot about that little baby that was born at Christmas time, and then we don't hear very much about Jesus until he starts his ministry. And this bothers me where the young people are concerned, because I want the young people to know do you know one time Jesus was just one year old? Did you know that? And then he was just two years old and just a, a, a romping, cuddly little two-year-old. And then he was a little three-year-old and no different than your three-year-olds because he was a little human being. He was the God-man. He, he wasn't God in that cradle kicking up his heels and his mama had to change his diaper. He wasn't there giving her orders and commands as God. He was a little human being, just like any other human being. And one day, how old are you? 
14. Did you know one day Jesus was 14? Huh? Did you ever think about that? That he was a teenager? How old are you, sonny? You're seven? Did you ever think one day Jesus was seven years old? Or do you think he was always a man? And, and like they picture him in the Sunday school charts with halos around his head, don't you believe it? Jesus never walked around Nazareth with a halo around his head. He walked around Nazareth just like you walk around the streets. He was a, a, a teenager, like any other teenager. He felt all the things that you feel. Do you think he ever teased the girls? <laughs> he was your age. He understands you. He understands all about you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you dearly. And, and don't think that he was always that man with a halo around his head. I don't like that Sunday school chart because it doesn't give the children the true picture of who Jesus really, really was. He was a human being. He did not have the fallen nature that we have. That was the only difference between Jesus and you. He was helpless. He was dependent. As you are, he couldn't do any more when he was 14 than you do at 14. He helped his father in a carpenter shop. Isn't that perfectly normal and natural? What does your daddy do? Huh? <laughs> well, just help him out, whatever he's doing. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you parents love these boys and girls, don't you? And you boys and girls love mom and dad, don't you? Oh, say yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, of course you do. Of course you do. I'm so glad you came tonight. I'm so glad. I, I, I love to have the children in the meetings, and I try to have something for them. And I try to make the word so simple that the young people can understand. I was a teenager when Jesus dealt with my heart, when he saved me and baptized me in the Holy Spirit. I was a teenager. Jesus called me into the ministry before I was saved. When I was five years old, Jesus called me into the ministry. And since I was five, I knew Someday I'd preach the gospel. And I really started preaching when I was five years old. I preached, don't tell anybody, promise me. But I preached to all the dolls in the neighborhood. I had all of my friends, when they came to play with me, they all had to bring their doll babies. And I preached to all of them, and this is what I don't want you to tell. I baptized all of them. But that was, was, Jesus was dealing with me, and it, and it was in my heart, and I knew someday I, I'd have to preach, so there's only one thing to do, and that was to get started. And don't ask me what I told them, I don't know. But all my little cousins, they all said, well, if we go to her house, we have to play church. They all knew that. But... Uh, well, they came and brought their dollies and subjected them for baptism. And uh, yes, yes. Yeah, children, don't think your children can't have God consciousness in their life. Don't think they can't. And don't say, well, they're not old enough yet to, to be saved or to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Parents, get your children to God just as soon as you can. And if God had ever given me that privilege of having a son or a daughter, 
I would want to be the one who led them to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd want to be there when they said, Mommy, Mommy, I have a little, a little nephew, David, was in the bathtub. And, you know, the Lord leads parents where they hang pictures in the house, too. And they couldn't find a place for this picture of Jesus knocking at the door. You've all seen that picture of Jesus outside the door knocking. So they hung that picture in the bathroom. And little David, his mother was giving him a bath. And he was five years old. And he said, Mommy, why don't those people open that door and let Jesus in? Every time you give me a bath, he's still outside the door. <laughs> and then she said, David, that door is your heart. And Jesus won't get in that door until you open the door and let him in. And he said, well, then let's do it right now. So sitting in the bathtub, David opened his heart to the Lord Jesus and was saved and has walked with the Lord ever since. And tonight, David is one of the radar men that helped protect Washington, D.C. Yes, but he, but uh, be sensitive, sensitive when God deals with, with those little hearts and none of them are too young to be saved and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I think the youngest that I have seen receive the baptism of the Spirit was five years old. And this little five-year-old was in the church in Detroit. And that child would get in the Spirit in intercession and groan and pray in the Spirit in intercession like you would see grown-ups and, and deacons or parents or even preachers groaning and praying in the Spirit. And his mother said she would look for him and he couldn't find him and she would go in his room and he was in there all alone praying and in deep intercession. I'd like to transport you to a Catholic church down in Texas where they have one of the largest Christian schools in the country, a parochial school. And they've had an outpouring of the Holy Spirit there. Yes, and, and that priest will not have a teacher who does not have the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And in their devotions, in that Christian parochial school, in their devotions in the morning, the gifts of the Spirit are in operation. And one little girl, seven years old, has a beautiful gift of interpretation. God uses her and, well, they just have regular grown-up services. Why not? It's the work of the wonderful Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So, you know, when he called me into the ministry at such an early age, of course, I, I knew, I understood and I didn't understand. And, and I cried a lot about this and didn't say anything about it. It was a wonderful secret in my life. And I kept telling him, I'm just a little girl. I'm just a little girl. And he just, you know, when God speaks to you, he doesn't have to talk audibly, although you hear it just as loud as if he did speak audibly. You hear what he says, and you know what he says. And he said to me, age has nothing to do with the supernatural. And that comforted my heart. If age has nothing to do with it, and that's true with God, all right, all right, God, all right, God. And I'll tell you another thing, if you promise me you won't tell. Blondie, tell me you won't tell. You won't tell, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you. I, I used to, five years old, 
I'd go out in our backyard where there was shrubbery at nighttime after the stars came out. Now this is very, very private, so you mustn't tell. And I would look up at the stars, and I'm just a child. And God, where are you tonight? Now you're looking out of one of those stars at me. Just where are you? To which star is our star tonight that you've got the window open? And I'd find the one. He's at that star tonight. And I'd talk to him. And he would talk to me. And I could ask him anything and he'd answer me. And he not only answered in one or two words, but he answered sometimes in long sentences until my child heart understood, oh, that's the way it is. Well, uh, all right, God, see you tomorrow night. And the next night I'd find the star where he was and commune with him again. You have your own little private chapel of prayer. You can have secrets with the Lord, too. I hope. How many of you are saved? How many of you are saved? Isn't that beautiful? Crowd, come on. How many of you are saved? Put up your hand. Put them way up high. Oh, that's beautiful. God love you. I love every one of you. I'm so glad to have you tonight. Are you glad you came? Glad you came? Please say something. I see heads, heads nodding. Thank you. You know, we have a heart has its own language, doesn't it? The heart has its own communication. So will you big folks forgive us if we had a little time out? Please say something. Yes. All right. Now we can get on with something just as wonderful. Don't you love Jesus? To think, to think we're in his hands. Just to think we're in his hands. Those sacred nail-pierced hands. And he's, he's got us in his hands. And he's holding us and he's taking care of us. And God, the God that made the universe. The God that Moses went up in the mountain and talked to, that's the same God that we know. The God, this Jesus who died on a cross, this is the same Jesus that we know about and that we talk to. Do you ever, do you ever visualize him? And just go up and kneel at the foot of the cross and talk to him. And let that precious holy blood flow down over you. And offer him all there is of you. Give yourself to him. And let the dear Holy Spirit break you all up and break through in this hard clay. Break us up. Break us up break through until the Holy Spirit himself can pour through us back to God the worship that he desires. I, I'm so glad, I'm, oh, I'm so glad that you love to worship and that you want to know about worship and that you do worship. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And I think the Lord's going to let me tell you a little bit tonight why. And how he dealt with my heart about this thing called worship. I, I've had a time with song leaders. Well, the Lord got through to him, as you can see. He got through to him. He, was, he wasn't hard to handle. He was, he, he's always been teachable. I appreciate this man. I appreciate him. And if it wasn't for him and the foundation he has laid here, 
I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have this privilege. I love him and appreciate him, and you do too, don't you? Yes. Now you see, give and it shall be given to you. You see that? Yes, yes. But oh, oh, you, you, you know what kind of singing there is over the country? And how little the song leaders in the churches, how little they understand the worship that's in this book. How little they understand the worship that Jesus deserves. And, and I, I, I love people and I, I want to help them and I would try to help them. And I remember one, oh, this young fella. I wish Terry was here. Go and get him somebody. How, you know, how did he get out of here? All right, I'll trust you to record it and give it to him. Isn't this a different kind of a meeting? But the Lord can do whatever he wants, can't he? Say praise the Lord. Say that again. Yeah. When he does what he wants, we we get somewhere, and it comes out right. But in in this church, I asked the song leader before we went out on the platform. I said. My brother, we going to worship Jesus this morning. I've got my songs already picked out. Oh, I said, that's fine. I hope you have some beautiful songs of worship. I said, may I ask, what are we going to sing first? He says, I've got, a, I've got a song of worship. And I said, again, would you please tell me what it is? Hold the fort for I'm coming. Well, I have had, I've, I've had them sing just, even Christmas carols, you know, just, just anything, anything, anything. No. And then we went through the jazz area. And I thought I would die, literally, when they started to jazz up the hymns. Some of those gorgeous, beautiful old things, they would have just holy, 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 if they dare. They would. They would. And then we got into the beat. The beat. And my spirit was, my spirit was so troubled that I literally became ill. And I had to go home. And I was home, ill, in bed, attended by a doctor. And the doctor didn't know what to do with me. You can't take a spiritual temperature to save your life. They can't diagnose what's going on in the heart and what's going on in the spirit. And that doctor sat by my bed one day. He sat there for an hour to try to figure out what was going on, what this was all about. Well, it wasn't something that a doctor could handle or a doctor could reach or a doctor would know anything about. And one day, my pastor at home, a godly man, arrived at my house with, he came at one time, two of the most spiritual ladies in the church, they came just about the same time. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you may have communion today. Well, I didn't know if he was going to take me home. I was that ill. I was that ill. Or what was going to happen? And after a while, I understood that I could have the sacrament today. Well, I, don't, I still don't know what this means. But my little mother was living. 
And I said, Mother, could we have some grape juice and a little bread and have the Holy Sacrament? And Jesus asked me to ask this pastor what this bread and this wine meant. What does this mean? I didn't want to ask him what that meant because part of God's dealing with me in this thing was a, a deep opening into the meaning of the bread and the wine. And I didn't want that disturbed. I didn't want to talk to him about it. But I also knew you better obey God if you want God to do the next thing. So the pastor gave us the bread and we took the bread. And then he offered to me the cup. And I said, Pastor, what, what does this mean? This broken bread and this poured out wine. Would you please tell me what, what, what does this mean? And my head went back on the pillow and I left them and went to heaven. I was in heaven with Jesus for two and one half hours. How did I know it was two and a half hours? Sometime a little later, the pastor says, we'll have the, we've just had the bread, now we'll have the wine. He said, I, I guess maybe 15 or 20 minutes we have been worshiping the Lord. And he looked at his watch and he said, 15, 20 minutes? We have been here two and one half hours. In that two and a half hours, Jesus was settling some things for me. There was a reason why he had taken me to heaven. Remember, it was this thing of worship in the churches that, that had caused suffering so in my spirit that it was reacting in my body. That's why he, Jesus was allowing this whole thing. In the moment my head went back on that pillow, I like to say to folks, I know what it's like to die, so don't be afraid. The moment my head touched that pillow, you know the Bible says to be absent from the body, finish it, is to be present with the Lord and it was just exactly that. I didn't cross over Jordan or wade through muddy waters and all those things that some of the some of the verses in the singing book and when I have crossed over Jordan and wading through those muddy waters and so on there wasn't anything like that. But the very moment my eyes closed to this earth they opened in heaven and Jesus was right there. He was there and it was only Jesus. I didn't see anything else at the moment but just my Oh, honey, is he beautiful? Oh, is he beautiful? Oh, is he beautiful? It would, uh, folks always want to know, tell us what did Jesus look like? I say, would you tell me what divine love looks like? If you can describe divine love to me, maybe I can, could describe him a little bit to you. Do you know what divine love would look like? Do you know what compassion would look like? Do you know what pity would look like? Do you know what mercy would look like? 
all wrapped up. And there he is. There he is. And he knew why he had brought me there. And uh, around him, there was just, oh, it, the only way you could describe it in earth words would say there was just uh, like a mist of some kind. And he just lifted up his hands and, and just rolled that mist away. Just uh, even that was done so tenderly. But the mist rolled away. And when it did, here was all, all the choirs of heaven. I told you on Sunday in heaven there are 10,000 times 10,000 choirs. And here they all were, as far as I could see, angels. Angel choirs, oh, to the north or to the south or to the east or to the west, everywhere, all oh, it was angels, angels, 10,000 choirs, and each choir has 10,000 angels and angels and angels and multitudes, angels everywhere. And what are they doing? Well, honey, they're all worshiping and adoring Jesus. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. Nobody in heaven is asking for anything. Not one single thing. Nobody's interested in anything else but Jesus. He is all and in all. And they're just worshiping and adoring Jesus, pouring out their praise and adoration. Not one, not one angel, they, they didn't pay any attention to me. My being there meant absolutely nothing. But, but their eyes were on him. Just he was all there is. He was their whole world. And, and they were worshiping him with their eyes. They were worshiping him with their bodies. Honey, it was just like worship was coming out the pores. Worship was coming out the pores of angelic beings, just flowing out of them, worshiping and praising and adoring Jesus. And all of them were saying the same thing, the same thing. And if you want to know what they were saying, see, the book, of Revelation is really the Christian song book. I don't want you to turn to it. I just love the atmosphere. You, 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 don't, you don't have to turn to it, but I see everybody is. So. It, oh, the, the Christian song book is, is the book of Revelation. Ah, they, you see, the angels know who Jesus is. They know who he is. They know who he is. They know what he has been through. They know what he suffered. They can't understand when he has done all this for us. Why we don't worship him more? Why we don't worship him more when he left heaven for us? When he suffered, he left everything behind. If he had committed one sin, if he had failed in one degree on any one area of his life, one sin, one failure, if he had failed in any way, he never could have gotten back to heaven again, nor taken any of us back there with him. And the angels know the price that Jesus paid for us. They know that. And, and can I tell you that, that he let me know some of the angels that were in that crowd. 
they let me know some of them. Some of the angels that were in that crowd were some of the angels who were with him out there in the desert, in the wilderness, when he was tempted by the devil. And, it's, and then at, at the close of the temptation, when that old dirty devil, you can't say mean enough things about him, he was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to steal the worship that belonged to Jesus. He wanted that for himself. And then out there in the wilderness, when he was tempting Jesus, he offered him everything he had. All that he owned was this earth. That's all he had. And he said, "If Jesus, if you will just fall down and worship me, I'll give you the glories of all the kingdoms of this world. I'll give it to you if you will just worship it. How devilish can the devil be? You just can't hate him enough. You just can't say bad enough things about him. He is such an awful, awful being. And then these angels came, it says, and ministered to Jesus because the strength had gone out of him. He had been 40 days without food. And then to meet the prince of the powers of darkness face to face. And he did this for you and for me. He did it for us. He did it for us. And every angel in heaven wonders why we don't worship him more for all that he did for us. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Young people, why? Why did he suffer that awful death? Why was he treated like that? Why did Jesus have to go through that? Because the price tag that hung on you and on me, when Jesus came and saw us where we were, there was a price tag hanging on us. And that price tag said the price of this boy and the price of this girl, if they're ever going to be saved, it will cost the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he looked, at us he loved us and he said I'll pay that price I'll pay that price and and he did pay that price so when they begin to worship him worship him they they want him to have the glory that's due his name and every angel in heaven cries cries glory and to hear 10,000 times 10,000 and all of that worship that's coming from them and coming out of them pouring out they want him to have the glory that belongs to him they want him to have the praise that belongs to him they want him to have the worship that belongs to him and they're they're, they're trying to make up for us too, but they can't because they don't know what it's like and will never know the power of his glorious redemption as we know it. But they cry out, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power and dominion for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And to hear them say with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And this just rolls and pours and rolls and pours in the heavens all the time worshiping and adoring our wonderful Lord. And, and uh, the angels were there that was with Jesus in Gethsemane. They saw him sweat drops of blood for us. And they saw that blood and the agony that, that Jesus suffered in Gethsemane. Honey, do you know do you know what was going on in Gethsemane? Do you know what was going on? You know, most of the time Gethsemane is interpreted that Jesus was drinking this 
cup and, and he was trying to turn away from this cup and, and, and didn't want to go to Calvary. That isn't truth at all. It was you and me that the devil was trying, the devil actually tried to kill Jesus in the garden. He tried to kill him before he got to Calvary. He wanted to kill him before he went to that cross. And he was hanging over him, telling him that he wouldn't get to Calvary, that he wouldn't make it to Calvary. Now listen, listen carefully. Jesus knew if he didn't get to Calvary, he would never have his bride. He would never have his bride. And that's what he came into the world for. He's down here for his church. He came for his bride. But if he, if he can't, live to get to Calvary, he won't have his church and he won't have his bride. He would go back to heaven to the Father, but he would never have his bride. So in with this thought and this agony and under this awful thing from the devil that he was going to die before, this is what he's praying about, Father, Father, let this cup pass from me. Father, Father, let it not be so. Let it not be so that I'm not going to have my bride, that I'm not going to have my church. Father, let it not be so. Father, Father, let this cup pass from me. Let this thing not be so that I'm not going to have my church and my bride. And Jesus, his life was one surrender after another. And finally, we, we think it's terrible if we have to surrender some little old minor thing. But finally, his, the final surrender in the life of Jesus was nevertheless, if I'm never going to have my bride, not my will but thine be done. And he surrendered even his church and his bride. That's the depths of Gethsemane. It's Gethsemane. And the angels rushed in and ministered to him. And he received strength and was able to go on to the cross. On to the cross. Down that Via Della Rosa, dragging that heavy old cross. Being all beaten with stripes. Beaten with stripes and the blood running down. How he, how he ever went through that. How he ever went through that, only, only God knows how he went through it. You and I, oh my dear. And then to turn away from him, turn away from him and not give him the worship to his holy name. How can we ever stop worshiping such a Lord and such a Savior and such a Redeemer, the Lamb for sinners slain, the Lamb who took our sins, who took our place, who became our sacrifice, who paid the price that you and I should have paid. We should have been nailed to that cross. We should have paid the price for our own sin. And I want to tell you, young people, honey dear, accept the sacrifice of Jesus for your life. If you don't accept the death of Jesus on the cross, someday you'll have to die for your, for your sins. You'll have to pay the price, which in the Bible is called the second death, and that means hell. Their hell is real. There is a hell. A very real hell. But Jesus took our place and paid the price that we should have paid. And it cost him Gethsemane and it cost him Calvary. Don't you think he's worthy of our praise? 
Don't you think he's worthy of our worship? The very depths of worship, the depths of worship, the depths of worship. And I want this little brook that's flowing here to rise to a crescendo until everybody in this place is so baptized with a spirit of worship. I don't care what you do. I don't care how you express it. Crown him with many crowns. Amen. Give him all there is of you. Give him your body. Let him do with your body whatever he wants to do. Give him your soul. Give him your spirit. Let you know... You know, for this, the precious Holy Ghost has come. The third person of the Trinity. The Word of God tells us Jesus went to the cross by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how he was able to go there, in the power of the Spirit. And you and I can't go there in any other way. But this same Holy Spirit who took Jesus to the cross, my precious sister, my precious brother, this same Holy Ghost has now come to baptize you and baptize me. And in, in the baptism, I want to speak particularly of him baptizing our whole emotional nature. Our emotional nature is where we love and where we hate. And the Holy Ghost wants to get hold of our emotional nature and baptize that whole emotional realm with the precious Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who knows who Jesus is. He knows his worth. His worth. Worthy is the Lamb. They cry, worthy is the Lamb. The worth of this man. The Holy Ghost knows the worth, the value of Jesus. And he gets hold of our whole emotional realm and begins to flow through us and flow out of us, giving back. To Jesus, the worship and the adoration do his holy name. Oh, let it rise. Let it rise. Just give yourself to God. I have heard people sing in the Spirit, worship in the Spirit. I remember one little pastor's wife, pastor's wife. Oh, she was, she was a hunchback woman. But that little sister, you know, you never in your life saw anybody in opera who was a hunchback. But this little woman was so baptized in the Holy Ghost and so given to God. When you sing and take lessons and voice lessons, they make us stand just so and you breathe just so and your diaphragm is just so and so on. To get the full volume, this little hunchback woman used to sing in the spirit. She would make any prima donna in the, in the opera, they would want to go and hide. And l while this little sister, pastor's wife, she always sat on the platform and God used her in helping to lead the worship in the congregation. And her voice was always out there way above everybody else. She couldn't begin to reach those notes with her natural voice. But she would climb way up there in the spirit and hold beautiful golden tones and sing until you just wanted to listen listen as your spirit was just lifted up to the throne while she worshipped and adored Jesus just let him have his way with you and do with you whatever he wants to do. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is beautiful. It's beautiful. Nobody on earth objects to a real manifestation of the supernatural. When God is at work and God, the Holy Ghost, has baptized our, 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 our 
whole emotional life and nature and we yield to him while he worships and adores the lamb for sinners slain. Oh, when you, you see him, when you see him, when you see him, you will want to kiss those wounds in his hand. You'll want to pour out your whole life if I could just be a libation poured at his sacred feet. He can have me, he can have all there is of me just to flow and to worship and to adore. Well, when I came after two and a half hours, I was healed. I opened my eyes here again. Of course, I was healed. I was, I was healed. And sometime later, I went into one of our largest Assembly of God churches for meetings, one of the largest. I didn't know what it was going to be like. And the song leader got up and he, he was going to pep it up. And I, I just couldn't help it. I said, honey, will you please excuse me? Do you mind if I say something? And the Lord let me tell them where I was, had just come from where I had been, what I had just witnessed, and how heaven worships. There's no jazz there. There's no beat there. There's no rock there. Worthy is the Lamb of God to be worshiped and adored, adored. It's a thing, worship. Worship is your life. When you truly worship, something goes out of you. Something goes out of you. Worship is just between you and Jesus. We don't worship, I worship the Lord because. No, I just worship, worship and adore. Worship and adore. The world is shut out. Everybody else is shut out. And you're shut in. And there's only one on your horizon. And his name is Jesus. 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 And it's beautiful to watch the Lord bring a whole congregation until they're all of one accord and they're all doing the same thing at the same time, singing, singing, adoring, worshiping. What happened? Well, in that very first meeting, when I told them where I had been and how heaven worships and adores Jesus, it was just like, the Holy Spirit just and just settled down and that wonderful presence of Jesus just came and baptized all of us and I stayed for two weeks I stayed for two weeks and for two weeks that wonderful presence of Jesus didn't lift and there was no beginning or ending to any of the services. We'd go in there and nobody waited for the song leader anymore. Somebody would start a chorus. They was hardly in the door until they'd start worship. I'd go early thinking I'd, I, the meeting is always on when I get there. I'd like to get there before the meeting starts, but it was still always on. If there was anybody in the church, they'd come in and worship. 
and everybody would come in under the cloud of his presence. Honey, people were saved. People were baptized in the Holy Spirit. The sick was healed. Cancer dropped off. It was beautiful to see God at work in that atmosphere where Jesus was loved and adored and received the glory do his holy name crown him with many crowns all hail the power of jesus name make much of his blood sing about redemption sing about calvary sing about the cross get close to this wonderful son of god you and i are caught up into something wonderful do you know what you're born into honey do you know you're born into something wonderful do you know you're born into something that's going to last throughout the countless ages of eternity do you know that please say something do you know that you're caught up into something marvelous and wonderful and the wonder of it all is Jesus and the most wonderful thing is that he loves you and he loves me and he has us in his hand and he's fashioning us and shaping us and working in us he hasn't taken any of us yet because well I none of us are ready to go yet not one person here is ready to go yet if we were he'd have taken us today but we're all caught we're all still here so he's still working on me what about you yeah he's still working on you yes yes and when we go when we go we want to be like him we want to give his heart the joy give his heart the pleasure just to give him joy i'm not i'm not thinking about how many crowns i'm going to have or how many mansions i'm going to have that i'm not interested in that if he just will say well done that's all i'll ask if i can just hear jesus say well done if his heart is pleased that's all i'll ask just let me spend the rest of the time at his sacred holy feet just closer to him as i can get he's wonderful he's wonderful his name is wonderful
of your touch right now every one of those lovely young people they love you they want you Jesus they're there in your presence before you they want you Jesus bless those precious young people bless them Jesus touch them touch them Jesus touch this precious people move move by thy precious Holy Spirit over us. We can only come as you draw us. We can only respond as you lead us. Help us give ourselves to thee. Help us pay the full price. Help us let go of anything that would separate us from you. Oh, Jesus, wash out of every heart, every bit of resistance, every bit of rebellion. Oh, just wash, wash, Jesus, wash, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Oh, precious Jesus, get from our hearts the love that you want. Get the response that you want, Jesus. Take us, take all there is of us. Give every part of our spirits and lives and natures such a baptism of the Holy Ghost that you possess us, you possess us, you possess us, Lord Jesus, and get from our lives the response that you want. Thank you. 
you for going to the cross. Thank you for paying that awful price. Thank you for dying in our stead. Thank you, Jesus. You know what those nails mean. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to be true to you. Help these precious young people, dear Jesus. Just wash out of their young hearts everything they don't understand about themselves. Every reason that keeps them from a hundred percent yielding to you. Please take away all resistance and all rebellion. Take it away. Take it away. We don't want it. Let it go, Jesus. And their lives filled with your sweetness and your love and that wonderful spirit that you are. I pray you bless the fathers before you. Bless the heads of families. Bless these fathers. Make them men of God, I pray. Oh, God, help every father. Help every deacon. Help every elder to be a man of God, to be full of God and full of the precious Holy Ghost. May they desire above everything to be good examples in the church, to be true ministers of your righteousness and your holiness. Oh, may they handle your goods to your delight. My Father, bless our mothers, bless our women, help them to be women of God, full of God and full of the Holy Ghost and good examples in the home. We need you so much. We know the hour is late and time is short and Jesus is coming. Our wonderful Lord is coming soon. Work your works. Do your will. Whatever is necessary in it. Oh, don't leave us alone. Don't leave us where we are. I pray you'll work in us. I pray you'll deal with us. Oh, God, don't leave us where we are. Don't leave us alone, but refine our natures and build godly characters within us. Make us strong in the Lord and in the power of the precious Holy Ghost. Dear Jesus, increase your power in this church and your holy anointing upon your people. They love you. They love to worship you. Oh, I pray let that river deepen. Let it deepen. Let the tide rise. Let the river flow back to the heart of God. Oh, precious Holy Ghost, we cast ourselves on you. You alone can help us. We love you so much. We love you so much. Oh, we love love you so much. We're before you. We're before you. We're before you. We're before your presence. We're before your presence, my precious Jesus. Oh, God, separate us from everything that would separate us from you. Take all the hardness out of us, dear God. All that emptiness. Oh, separate us from the world. Separate us from the world. Separate us from self and selfishness. Oh, self-centeredness, oh God. Oh, self-will. Bring down our wills in subjection to your will. Make this people a holy people. Oh, God. God, make this people a holy people, full of God and full of the Holy Ghost. We worship and adore you. 
We're before you, we're before you, for your very highest and best for us. O Lamb of God, <clears throat> baptize in the Holy Spirit those who have not received this sacred holy baptism. Baptize in the Holy Spirit any within our gates tonight who are not saved. Help them to make a full, complete surrender to Jesus. Forgive all of us for every sin that we've committed right up to this present time. And let thy pure, sacred, holy blood wash us just now. Wash us just now. We thank you for that holy holy atonement that Jesus made for us, that we could be fully redeemed, that we could be healed, that we could be delivered, that we could be released, that we could get free from ourselves, free from ourselves, free from every bondage, and be loosened unto thee, that the Holy Ghost could pour back to you the glory, the honor, the worship do thy holy name praise you Jesus praise you Jesus praise you Jesus praise you Jesus all glory to the lamb that was slain all glory to the lamb that was slain all glory to the Lamb that was slain. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. All glory to the Lamb that was slain. Oh, 
taketh away the sins of the world. We worship thee. We worship thee. We worship thee. Oh, Worship 
the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, oh, we worship you, Jesus, thou art worthy, O Lord, thou art worthy, O Lord, thou art worthy, Lord, hallelujah. Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is all.